Happy New Year, everyone. I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Resolve to stay in touch with the city this year by signing up for Nixle if you haven't already. Nixle is a community notification service that we use to better communicate with our residents. Using Nixle, the city sends texts and emails to subscribers in a very specific area. We can go down to the quarter mile. Examples include notifications of boil orders, road closures, and water main breaks. You can sign up by texting your zip code to the number 888-777, or you can visit nixle.com. City employees are also encouraged to sign up for Staff Alert, which is a private text messaging system just for employees to quickly notify them in emergency situations. The city's new director of creative services started work this past week. Megan Krigger will lead the Office of Culture and Creative Services, which is a new division which serves residents by facilitating relationships within the arts and economic development communities to help improve the city. My name is Megan Krigger and I'm the new director of Creative Services as part of the Office of Culture and Creative Services, part of the uh, Office of the City Manager for the City of Kansas City. The Office of Culture and Creative Services has really um, outlined the scope of work through the Mayor's Task Force and the plan that was created called uh, KC Arts Convergence. And it's a cultural plan that really sought input from the community on how best to integrate arts, culture, creative services as part of city services for the community looking at how we can use arts and culture as an economic development strategy. Uh, that includes connecting artists and creatives with businesses, giving them more of a platform uh, for artists and to also help businesses. Uh, it also plays a, a huge role in community development. There is so much activity and so much energy around the arts. It's already part of the urban fabric. Uh, what intrigued me was that the community came together and really laid out a plan for how to strategically integrate the arts into city living. And so to be a part of a, of a new office, uh, to be part of the city manager's office and working closely with the mayor and the mayor's task force in helping to implement those strategies. And so for the next uh, couple of weeks, I'm very interested in meeting folks to help identify what those priorities are as we move forward in implementation of the Arts Convergence Plan. This position fulfills a recommendation of the Mayor's Task Force on the Arts. Members of the Creative Economy who wish to contact Megan for a meeting or event can email her at megan.krigger at kcmo.org. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. It's cold outside, but there is a lot of opportunity to come inside, warm up, and enjoy some slam dunk all-star entertainment. Don't miss the Best of the Midwest Showcase at Municipal Auditorium on January 31st. At this primetime high school basketball event, some of the biggest names in Kansas City, St. Louis, Iowa, and Missouri will compete. For ticket information and schedule games, go to bestofthemidwestshowcase.com. For an exciting college basketball experience, come out and cheer on the UMKC Ruse at Municipal Auditorium, February 5th, 7th, and 26th. For ticket information and game times, go to umkckangaroos.com. It's not too early to make your Valentine plans, and this year, the Valentine's Music Festival comes to Municipal Auditorium on February 13th. This romantic evening, hosted by Doug E. Fresh, will feature entertainers like Guy, Bobby Brown, Casey and JoJo, and Elle DeBarge. Hurry and get your tickets through Ticketmaster.com or at the Municipal Box Office. Also, the nine times Tony Award winning musical from the creators of South Park, The Book of Mormon, comes to the Music Hall February 24th through March 8th. The New York Times calls it the best musical of the century. Washington Post says, it is the kind of evening that restores your faith in musicals. And Entertainment Weekly says, grade A, the funniest musical of all time. Again, buy your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or at the Municipal Auditorium box office. These are just a few of the many events that the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offer our community. 
To learn about even more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. such as this can be terrifying and even life-threatening. Domestic abuse is a good portion of the 911 calls we receive. You should be aware that Missouri's Adult Abuse Act provides protection for adults seeking relief from being abused, harassed, or even stalked. To begin the process of protection, the victim can apply for an ex parte order. We spoke with Detective Ben Caldwell of the Domestic Violence Section about what that means. An ex parte order of protection is, uh, the term ex parte means temporary by nature. Uh, so it's a temporary order of protection. It's an order that is granted by the courts or by the judge and in essence it prohibits contact through telecommunication devices, um, computers, telephones, text messaging, uh, direct presence, uh, prohibits people from uh, going to residences, businesses, schools, and it provides that, that protection until an order can be heard or until the matter can be heard before a judge. To get an order of protection you simply have to respond to the county court um, in which you reside wherever an offense occurred um, or where the respondent who is the person who is going to be served where they reside in one of those three counties you can go. Typically it's best if the person goes in the order or in the county that they reside in. Now sometimes persons will need protection or need an emergency ex parte order of protection. In those cases they can go to any of our shelters and they can assist them with the obtaining them and there are some hospitals that can also help with an emergency ex parte uh, order protection and for those I would encourage people to contact their local law enforcement agency and they can direct them to those resources. There is no cost at all for an order protection. It is uh, totally free and totally confidential. If they violate that order the petitioner simply needs to call the police department and tell them that a violation has occurred and if the person, the respondent is present that person may be arrested and held accountable immediately. Other times we may work the case uh, and be investigated by the domestic violence section and worked as either a potential felony, state misdemeanor, or city ordinance violation, depending on the circumstances. Every citizen should be aware that the courts and police have methods in place to help victims of abuse. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. You probably have some holiday lights that burned out and you can recycle them rather than just tossing them into the trash. Used lighting can be dropped off at the city's three recycling centers located at 400 Northwest Berry Road, 4707 Doremus Avenue, and 9051 Hillcrest Road until February 15th. The centers are open Wednesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the trees, you know the real kind, not your artificial trees, can also be dropped off at the city's three leaf and brush centers. The drop-off center is located at 1815 North Shoto Traffic Way and 11600 North Main Street are open Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The drop-off center located at 10301 Raytown Road is open Saturday only from 8 a.m. to 5. Now, all three sites are free for residents to use on Saturdays, but on other days there is a $5 charge per tree. All drop-off centers will close for the season on Saturday, January 18th and will reopen in mid-March. Proof of residency is required. 
In observance of the upcoming Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Monday, January 19th. Also, curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day throughout the week. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week and a great 2015.